hi in this lesson we will be discussing about abstract class encapsulation and the, these these two concepts are one of the fundamental concepts in java uh, in any programming and op object oriented programming language so let's discuss this what uh, abstraction and encapsulation is all about and how it is being benefiting us in various ways so uh, as we know that Java is an objective oriented programming language and it enables us to organize our program into simpler logical units known as objects and it offers abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. So we had uh, just shared a glimpse of these technology of these concepts uh, in the previous modules but let's imp uh, implement this and let's have a deep dive into the, these concepts called abstraction and encapsulation. So OOP is a method methodology where by which we can con design our program by implementing class in and on their object so every business use case has uh, a class and we have multiple business uh, objects associated with that class and with the help of this class and object combination we can solve any particular problem so what is an abstract class and it deals with the abstraction of the program but what is the abstraction so in general term it is a feature of object oriented programming that shows only es essential information and, and hides unnecessary information so for the end user we have much information uh, regarding things but at particular screen or at particular interfaces we only want to show uh, specific use cases to the end users for example if we have an employee classification um, tool and we can say that one employee can check uh, the other employees phone number email address and uh, we can say that the full name we, we, these three fields can be saw by the other employee but he cannot employee one cannot see the uh, the salary of employee to the uh, the bonuses he or the loans he has get from the company this is not it's this is uh, prohibited and this cannot be allowed to see from the employee one window of employee two so here the abstraction uh, comes in that we have only showed the necessary the mandatory the essential things towards the user and hide the unnecessary thing uh, from the user and this will help us in making our code much structured much simpler and user friendly also so in object oriented programming through abstraction the primer tries to ensure that the only the functionality is provided to the user that the, the user which is being interacted with that core functionality is also being provided not to add many functionalities in an application so for example if I am having a payout connection and I need to add my banking details in that payout connection so only those payout connections screen will be visible to me not on not the order placement screen should be visible to me so the necessary things should be visible and unnecessary things should be avoided from the user aspect so all its implementation and ex and other extra tenuous aspects are kept hidden to reduce complexity and the increase the pro program efficiency so we have when we have less data when we have less features to be shown to the towards the user we can achieve the uh, in reducing complexity and we can increase the program efficiency also so uh, a class that is de declared by using the abstract keyword is known as abstract class and a ca an abstract class is not in instantiated uh, that is we cannot create any object of that class uh, and uh, and but we can use this when uh, we are we uh, when we are inheriting some of the other class is inheriting the abstract class we can do this but uh, ideally uh, or we can say that directly it cannot be um, it cannot be used for making a uh, an object from that abstract class an abstract class is permitted to have uh, both abstract and non abstract methods so what does it mean that a class an abstract class will be called an abstract class with the help of the keyword and it must contain one uh, or one uh, more than one abstract methods uh, so that it can be called as an abstract class and this 
class can contain abstract method also and non abstract methods also a class is needed to be declared as an abstract class if it is contain abstract methods and if in order to use an abstract class one can extend style class so if if i need to access the abstract class it access its functions i how i can use it that i will extend the child class i will make a child class and with the help of that extend feature i can use those parameters i can use those uh, function in my child class also so um, uh, what is the syntax behind the abstract class so we have public abstract class person so now with the help of this abstract keyword we can easily use this that this is the class which uh, this is a class which is abstract in nature so uh, now we can create the instance and if we need to create this instance person person into new person it will not be valid because we cannot directly create an object from this abstract class so how we can use this we will be exploring this in the uh, next phase now so the abstract methods are meant to be used by the abstract classes only so we are used that if we have if we have defined any abstract method abstract ma ma function uh, function it is meant to be used by the abstract classes only abstract methods are method without the body so we if in the parent class we have only the declaration we have only the signature but we don't have any implementation for that but uh, we will be studying that why we not have any implementation for that so that uh, there are various reasons and with the help of example we will be studying this so an abstract class may have both abstract methods and the regular methods also and this is the thing that we have a public abstract class person now once we have a semicolon here it the the function the class definition will be completed so public abstract white my job so this is an abstract uh, uh, function and this is an abstract class and we can have non abstract functions also uh, uh, and it is allowed in the uh, abstract class so now why we are using uh, this in order to make a, a little bit heavier so we can say that the subclasses of an abstract class are bound to implement override all uh, methods uh, of its corresponding abstract subclass superclass what does it means that we are uh, we when we are having a subclass like we have a teacher which is a subclass of person it is bound to override all those methods which we are having uh, in the uh, abstract class so once we are uh, for example if we go towards this the what is the purpose like if we have a person and when we are having a class called teacher or a painter all of their definitions are being changed all of them because teacher cannot be paint painter painter cannot be a teacher for example in a in a simple scenario but if we are going towards a thing that for the teacher the person is same the person class is same but it has been inherited or we can make the objects for teacher uh, separately we have made the plumber object for plumber separately we have made the uh, methods or we have made the object for painter separately so this painter has its own set of uh, function and the function definition can be altered in the painter scenario as compared to teacher as compared to plumber so to uh, to overall map the situation this abstract class concept is main so the main purpose of the abstract class is to function uh, as the base classes which are to be extended by the subclasses in order to create full uh, full implementation so what does it means that here uh, subclass child must override this uh, method to give its implementation details like teacher class will do teaching in this method and painter class will do painting so when we are aware that all the person child classes will be re and re re prerequisite and requisite to override this my job method there is no point implementing this method in this in the parent class so we know that when the object are been created and when um the when the t uh, person person uh, teacher object is being created uh, my definition function definition will be changed the, this my job uh, function definition will be change because teacher uh, work is to the teacher task is to teach the student painters task to paint the walls and the doors so when it is uh, there is no logic that when we know that this is the case 
every time the method the function definition is being overridden so what is the case for what is the point for defining the function definition in the parent class so here the abstract class comes into play that if you only write the function definition function signature and then you can have the function definition in the child class so that this function definition has their own separate uh, definition separate implementation as compared to other child classes so with the help of this thing we can use this abstract class and uh, it will be helpful us for us to maintain another code repositories for painter class for the teacher class and they cannot or oh, they cannot interface or they cannot intervene in the both of the function definition so let's have a implementation here so we have an abstract class person and then we have my job abstract void then I have a class teacher which has been extended from the person so public void my job this is the same uh, uh, function which we have specified and then now we have said that print ln my job is teaching then we have a painter class which is being extended by the abstract class of person and now the same variable is being used or same function is being used public void my job and now I have used that my job is painting and now the class main and here I have made the object new teacher and obj by object and then we have an object too which is being for the painter and now what is will done that it will shift f6 it will print me all those things the teacher this is a teacher and his job is my job is teaching so and this is the painter and my job is painting so with the help of this abstract function all my function definition is being changed change according to my child class so this is the biggest advantage of uh, uh, abstraction that it has provided the necessary thing uh, towards uh, us and it has been it has eradicated and remove all the unnecessary from the user so this person teacher class my my job will not interfere in painter class and vice versa so with the help of abstraction we can use this in order to uh, separate the child classes data and in order to uh, make use of separate business use cases according to that now we have a uh, Hence, for such real world scenarios, we generally declare a class in abstract and later concrete classes, which are which are being considered as the uh, child classes or subclasses. Extend these classes and over override these method or accordingly and what does it mean that they will implement their own function definition in their own terms and according to their business specific business use case and now what is encapsulation and encapsulation is defined as wrapping or building up of data and methods of class into a single unit so the fundamental concept of this encapsulation is that the internal representation should be separated or the hided from the outside so we can we have a uh, we have some of the data members and the functions available and now another file uh, another class needs to access those so we need a security layer that these functions cannot be used or cannot be iterated directly we need some of the functions getter and setter functions we can say that and with the help of these getter getter and setter function we can easily access those data members and what we cannot directly access those those members so we have um, uh, some of the uh, keyword specifiers which we had studied in the previous lesson also but here we are having to implement this uh, these that we have public protected and and uh, private uh, members and this this is this whole procedure hiding data uh, from the other classes is called data heading and data heading in Java is defined as the mechanism to hide variables of a class from other classes access is only access to these variables only granted through the method of corresponding class so if I have some of the methods I have getter and setter function so I the compiler will allow me to access those data members and now in order to achieve a lesser degree uh, of encapsulation we can use access modifier like protected or public but if we need a strong encapsulation uh, we are restrictive access modifier then we can use a private uh, key member and with the help of this keyword they, the the things are being protected 
connected in such a way that other classes cannot access it directly so any other subclasses or classes within same package will not able to access the private variables or methods so what does it mean that we have subclasses or we can have another uh, class we have subclasses also and we have and uh, classes other classes a part of this class a where we have private members b and c members cannot access the class a variables easily when we are having a private uh, access specifier so if we want to get information about the current state of the data we need to declare all the getter and setter met methods at public and with the help of those getters and th setters we can easily access the values so steps to achieve encapsulation in java are firstly I declare the variables of a class as private so that no other class or object can access that so the first step is to declare them as private and secondly we need to provide public public setter and getter function so that it can uh, work for us for the modify write only and the view for the read only values of our private variables so let's implement this in a short implementation and now we have a class employee I have assigned private employee name private in the employee ID in private member that uh, employee salary we can use his here as public int sorry public int employee salary also but here for the sake of encapsulation we had write the private int salary in employee salary. now I have a public int get salary it will simply return this employee salary to me it will return the simply the employee name to me and it will return simply the uh, employee ID to me and now I have a set salary uh, this is a getter and setters and we have if I need to get uh, update the salary I have new salary employee salary set name and we have uh, set ID now this overall employee class is being finished and I have made another class which is called test employee so now this test employee is that employee uh, person and we have object and now when we are having obj dot set name if we, uh, new name is sunny then we have one th uh, ten thousand and we have the object ID 20 and now when I we are printing this it will give me the print access so uh, with the help of this encapsulation with the help of only getter and setter function I can only change the information else if I directly access these employee name employee salary it will give me as me an error so direct access of employee ID is not possible employee ID employee name employee salary is not possible due to encapsulation and system dot out uh, if we go towards this we can easily use this so let's have to implement this first shift f6 and now it is giving the me the correct output but if I go towards this uh, let's have it here and what if this give us an error let's it has given me as an error because employee ID has a private access employee this is the uh, red option employee ID has a uh, uh, employee ID has a private access in employee so we cannot use this uh, in order to check that so let's implement this shift f6 and now what is if yes it has given me an error that we have a private access in employee ID so you cannot directly implement this or directly access this employee ID we need a getter and setter function in order to play with that data in order to access with that data so this is the overall implementation of encapsulation in Java and the abstraction so we, I would request you to please go through this so that you can have a correct understanding of abstraction encapsulation used in uh, Java uh, programming language